Hello there and welcome to UK Diesel and Electric Railway Modelling and in this video I'm going to do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to do a review of this month's Rail Express magazine issue 259 December 2017 or more precisely the Rail Express Modeler Supplement. For me this month's copy is absolutely perfect. It really hits the spot. I find that 1960s and 70s and maybe even up to the mid 80s it's a little bit too early for me and today's privatization scene well that's too late but for me the period in the late 80s and early 90s this just hits the mark it's right in the goldilocks zone for me all sectorization because this is the 30th anniversary of the subsector rail freight livery unveiled at Ripple Lane Depot in 1987. So, we have some industry news first of all. Intercity liveried 87 upcoming from Hornby. Rails of Sheffield limited edition, Concrete Bob. Plus Railtech doing Sheerness bogey steel scrap wagon decals. And Cambrian kits have been sold. All of interest to me as a 4 mil modeler. For the first article, we have a nice trio of rough rate coal livered 58s from Helgen. It includes an interesting choice where the maintenance crew removed the body side doors but forgot to put them back in the right place. He explains how they tended to get a little more dirty in the centre than on the cabs. Something to consider when modelling. He also references some variations in the bogies where the early ones had sandboxes behind the bogey frame, whereas the later ones are visible in front. He also mentions something that I've done on one of my own Coal 58s, where the previous delivery has been worn away, showing the red soil bar beneath. He also mentions one of the few criticisms I have about this model and how it would be nice if there was an etch roof fan and grill set that were available. And, and it'd be nice to have an etch for the main grill too. The article goes through a lot of details and how he worked his way through the project. There was one thing mentioned in the article, how he found it hard to remove the printed mainline freight logos and how he had to resort to wet and dry. I was more fortunate that, that IPA worked perfectly for me, although it did take a little more rubbing than I expected from a Hornby or Beckman model. Next we have an interesting article about the evolution of rail freight livery by the editor Simon Bendel. We have uh, one here with Taper Light Suspension System and the article explains the transition testing the livery application from the plain rail grey with yellow ends here through charcoal grey which is deep up metal grey with red ends and finally into the final livery version of executive dark grey with yellow ends then we have a nice rail freight metals class 56 ray paint by Alex Carpenter it's a very nice painting and weathering job. The, the only thing that's disappointing for me is that he missed the plates that cover the lifting points. When Hobby brought this model out, for some reason they produced it with the plates missing, which was a surprise because I, I've never seen a photo of 56 with them removed. For the model, he picked a prototype from the early Brel body, which lacked the buffer beam cowling and rubber mounted quarter lights and plated horn covers. Finally, if, if I were in a magazine, I would have fitted etched roof fan too, because the mesh on the model is a little bit clumsy and can be approved upon. And on the opposite page, there's a good description of which 56s carried the Royal Freight Metals livery. Turn the page, and we have a nice petroleum 47 to illustrate how depots did some unofficial personalization, such as this Thornaby Kingfisher, and mentions other applications as well. I remember Stratford Depot doing this a lot too, especially on their shunters and 37s and 47s. Later, Depot diamond plaques were used to great effect, though it's a shame not all rail freight locos were fitted with them. Then we have an article about how there was an exhibition train to raise awareness of the new branding. 
It also has a nice bit of modelling by Terry Bendall making a VCA van out of a Beckman VAA van with some old A1 models brass overlays. I got one of these for the VAA, but since the Beckman model came out, it's not really much use anymore. VCAs generally ended up finding their way into departmental use. As a P4 model, Terry's work is very precise with excellent detailing overall and some extra detailing seen here. Overleaf, we see some more photos, mostly from David Radcliffe who submits some very good freight articles to this magazine on a frequent basis. And I think the VCA comes out very nicely, despite the etch showing its age by being a bit chunky on the ribs. Moving on to rough reconstruction, we see a pair of 33s, which were used on a variety of stone services across the southern regions, such as the sea dredged aggregates out of Angerstein Wharf. But they were also known for workings based upon the construction of the Channel Tunnel at Shakespeare Cliff bringing in concrete lining segments and stone for the construction and taking away extracted spoil. Overall, this is a great weathering and painting job of a Hel of Helgen 33s, but I think a couple of things that were missed was the fitting of a proper roof fan and grill, but also the unfortunate dent that the locos ended up with due to rough treatment when coupled and uncoupled. For me, it's a real signature for the 33s, and it's something I'll be doing on my models. And across the page, to go with the 33s on channel tunnel work, the Queen Mary brake vans were used for propelling at the Shakespeare Cliff Terminal. One of the things that's really good is that this isn't the Backman model, it's a Shivers brass etch kit which has the plated body sides. The Backman model features the original plank body which limits the rate, range of liveries that can be accurately applied to it. And then we have a modelling aspect that hardly ever gets noticed, and that is simply branding. How many of us have built a depot but didn't notice the branding and signage? This is a great little article that few people would think of writing, and I think it's largely because we often focus on the moving trains and less on the surroundings. As such, they're the last thing on the list when it comes to preparation of a layout. Often the crew room and associated car parking is something that's used as a space filler rather than a feature. And then we turn over, it's not just depots that gain this kind of branding, it's in yards and stabling points and terminals. So when you're designing a layout, it's something that's worth considering in the planning stage. Another turn of the page, and we have an article by Phil Eames, a railway modelling colleague of mine at the Demi Society, who's done a very nice rake of MEA open wagons for his beautiful P4 layout Calcutta sidings. His train is based upon one that ran from Newport in South Wales to Rufford in Nottinghamshire. As always, Phil has an eye for the little details that many miss, and adds a few additional components that make a ready-to-run model and turn it into a work of art, like these etched brake discs. And to accompany it, David Radcliffe provides an insight into the MEA variants and their usage. So we have an excellent combination of modelling and prototype that I, that I think only Rail Express brings to the railway modelling world. And finally, it's a small review of some of the few wagons that received the subsector rail freight treatment. Among them, we have the opportunity for a Backman OBA, a Cambrian BBA, or an SPA here, which no doubt be seen behind the Class 56 shown earlier, or the SEA variant with the Allied Steel and Wire Canopy, and an FGA with a container converted for propelling movements on the Cricklewood to Forders bin liner train. Also, rough rate logos could be found on a variety of private wagons as well, albeit the right way round, and a few still carry them. And of course, some reviews. So as things go, this was a thoroughly good copy, 
And if you model this period, I urge you to get a copy of this issue if you haven't already. Personally, I think this is the best railway magazine around. Not just because I've written a few articles for it myself, but because both railway modelling, the historical and the prototype features are interested, informative and always of high standard of quality. As well as, of course, keeping up to date of what's happening on the full-size railway.